Welcome to the Woodworkers video on how to adjust a Brio pleated insect screen. Today I've got Nigel with me from Brio who's going to show us how to make these adjustments and cover some points on the screen itself. Nigel, what can you tell us about the screen first of all? The screen is, uh, uses the latest technology in European made polyester mesh. Um, it's made and assembled here in Australia under strict quality control standards and comes with a five year warranty. That's great, five year warranty is good. What does the warranty actually cover? The warranty covers the, uh, the workmanship of the actual screen, the finish on the extrusion and the plastic roll or plastic guides and stainless steel rollers. We've been selling these screens now for a number of years and there's tens of thousands of these screens actually being sold and we have very few warranty issues. However, accidents do happen and sometimes the screen can get damaged and sometimes it's the actual frame itself that hasn't been fitted correctly. So the purpose of this video is to show how those non-warranty type issues can be resolved. Okay, picture the scene. You've had your bifold installed, you've got your screen installed. You go along to slide your screen, it gets stuck. So what's the first thing we need to do here to check to find out what the problem is, Nigel? The first thing we'll look at will be looking for contaminants in our channel. Those contaminants may be builder's rubble, dust, sand and even stones. If you've checked your channel and you find that the channel is still clear and clean from contaminants and the, the screen is still binding, the next thing we need to do is check our channel to make sure it actually runs parallel top and bottom. You need to make sure that the measurements are correct and accurate. The easiest way to do that is to use a stick. So this is how you will use the stick for measuring. The first thing you will do will sit the stick on top of the sill, stand it up parallel with the jam and make a mark at the underside of the pelmet. Make your mark at the underside of your pelmet on your stick. Once you've done this, move to where the screen is actually binding and repeat the process. Once you've made the, um, your second mark, compare to see whether there's a difference. If the second mark is lower than the first measurement, it means there is a bow or a deflection in the head of the bifold door. Depending on how bad the bow is, you may be able to take some tension off the guides on the screen to at least get you to be able to use the, the screen until your builder comes to site to rectify the issue. Just get yourself an Allen key that suits the size of the grub screw. Go to the top guide and slightly loosen off the grub screw. Loosen this off until the bottom guide drops and then you can actually check to see whether there's any lateral movement in your handlebar. If there is no movement in the handlebar, there is no more adjustment that can be done. With the screen being installed correctly, let's imagine this. You have a house, you're on top of a nice big hill and a big heavy gust of wind comes through. Now the screens are rated to a 25 km an hour wind, but winds do get swirly and they do get double gusts. So there is an occasion when the screen may blow out on heavy wind days. Let me show you how the correct procedure is to put your screen back into the channel. As you can see, this screen is actually out of the track. Let me show you how to put it back in. First, we sort of take a bit of the tension off the actual screen, push it in gently and just move along the channel, gently continuing till the whole screen is into the channel. Once that's completed, open the screen right away and that'll reset all your pleats again. The pleats make up the structural integrity of the screen along with the threads. The pleats also make the screen a lot more visible, unlike flat screen that tend to blend into the background. Accidents happen. These can be caused by kids and dogs and pets leaning against it and causing the threads to stretch. Let's look at ways of retensioning these threads and getting your screen back to its original condition. Here's a thread that is no longer under tension. You can see it's all loose. Comparing it here is a thread that is still under tension. Let's look at how you will retension the threads on your Brio screen. The first thing you need is a roll of masking tape and your Allen key again. What you need to do is firstly tape your screen back to your jam using your masking tape. We do this top and bottom to ensure that the screen remains parallel with your jam. Let's look at showing you how to adjust the threads. First thing we need to look at is finding the, uh, the cleats in the channel. These are silver things that stand out quite well. You may or may not have a dust cover, depending on how old your screen is. The first thing to do is find the, uh, the joint in the dust cover and just pull it out. Once you've done that, you'll get access to your adjustments. Take your Allen key, move in. First we need to start with the first cleat, which is going to be furthest away from our jam. We loosen it off so that we can actually slide the cleat. We move it up till we get a bit of tension and then we push it about 10 mils or so further. We repeat this on all the other threads. 
Now these don't need to be guitar strings tight, they just need to be firm. And once I've made the adjustment, I'll show you how firm they are as a comparison. Be aware that you need to make the adjustment on the threads in the head channel as well. You need to come back to your masking tape, gently remove and operate your screen. This is where we look at the screen to make sure your adjustments have been correct and your screen finishes nice and square into the jam. With the tensioning of the screen, your goal is to have the screen run parallel and fit flush against the jam. You may find a situation where you have a gap at the top and the bottom is touching or vice versa. If this happens, you need to make some more adjustments to the threads. If your screen has a gap at the top, we need to increase the tension slightly on the bottom channel. If your screen has a gap at the bottom, we need to increase the tension slightly in the head channel. You can play with the tensions on the thread slightly by either tightening or loosening off slightly until you get your screen parallel with the jam. Now that we've done all of our adjustments, our screen is closing parallel with our jam and we can see that all our threads have all got some nice tension in them. If you do have a broken cord, we can supply you with a cord repair kit. We also have a video to show you how to actually make the repair. If you're not up to that yourself, we can give you the name of a technician who can come out and do it for you and you can deal directly with him. If you find that the screen is getting a little bit of a squeak or getting a little bit of a drag through it, you can use silicon spray and silicon spray only into the channel to give it a little bit of lubrication. Do not use products like WD-40, RP-7, Inox, anything that's a lanolin or an oil-based product. Otherwise that will avoid your warranty and create more contaminants into your channel. When you're vacuuming the channel to get rid of all the contaminants, be aware that the screen will actually drag contaminants back down to the jam point. So be aware that you need to bring your screen out, move your screen forward slightly and gently and vacuum out right back at this jam point. So that's how you maintain your Brio screen. So thank you Nigel from Brio for coming in and helping us out and thank you for watching.